little boy looks pretty tough, but would your kids know how to keep themselves safe in a dangerous situation? Michael DePasquale thinks parents could teach, should teach kids self-defense, and he's here to share with us some of the tips in his book, Streetwise Safety for Children. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Thanks for being with us this Pleasure morning. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure. Well, Michael, tell me, who are the most vulnerable victims of, of crime? I think the most vulnerable victims, uh, and it's quite obvious, are children. And I think because of the fact that, uh, for the most part, they're helpless mm -hmm. without a parent or without mm -hmm. somebody as a guardian there with them. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that a child understands the environment before he tries to understand physically what he or she could do or be taught to do. Mm -hmm. It's important that uh, a parent does teach a child, as well as teachers teaching children, that the environment out there, you have to secure yourself mm -hmm. in that environment. And there are ways to secure yourself in that environment. So they, for the most part, being a five or six or eight or ten year old child uh, having an adult come over to you and pacify you by trying to uh, maybe sell you an animal by giving mm -hmm. you an animal rather a stuffed animal or give you money or uh, possibly fake a, a lost dog situation where you please help me find my dog mm -hmm. kids love that I mean kids you know kids for the most part if there's a lost dog they're gonna go try to find that dog mm -hmm. sure. mm -hmm. so they find themselves in those situations which are very dangerous situations obviously you always need to be on the lookout now Michael you say there are three things that every kids should have. What are they? Uh, for the most part, I think that a child should always have two quarters in their pocket at least. And why? Because the uh, emergency phone call, if they need to make a phone call, you need to make a child understand, especially a parent, mm -hmm. that without a quarter in their pocket, without the right phone numbers, they can't reach their parents, they can't reach somebody mm -hmm. that's important to them. If they're in a situation where they might be lost or they're in a situation where their bicycle breaks down, they have to have that quarter in their pocket. Okay. Uh, that's one of the, there's plenty, quite a few situations actually that's very important to a child. I think another one is making sure that his bicycle is secure because children all ride bicycles, skateboards, bicycles, and so on. Um, the tires have to be uh, obviously uh, uh, blown up to the point where it's proper uh, poundage in the, in, in the tire so that they don't blow out their tires, make sure that they, they, they don't have uh, nails in the tires, treads are in the tires, spokes. Lights, maybe. Lights, Lights. are very important. Mm -hmm. I think that their reflectors are important, how they carry their equipment on the mm -hmm. bicycle. Uh, do they have a rack? Do their parents put a rack on a bicycle so they don't have to carry it in their hands? Because it's easy for a child to lose his balance, and if he loses his balance in falls, you might have a situation where there's a, a somebody there mm -hmm. seeing a child fall off the bicycle and they might get the, I the idea before it even is in enters into their head. They see the child fall and say, well, you know, hey, you know, this, this kid's in trouble. Maybe let me help him. And all of a sudden he's pacifying the child. Next thing you know, something clicks in his brain. All of a sudden you have a situation in your hand that wasn't even meant to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what was the third thing? Well, the third thing for the most part uh, is malls. I'm a firm believer that a child, uh, when they do go to the malls, okay, mm -hmm. should know exactly where a, a focus point should be to reach their big brothers, their sisters. Also in malls, knowing it's very, very important that there are certain people that they have to be at that mall with. Mm -hmm. How they like uh, lock up their bicycles at the mall, how to pay attention, and the most important part of going to a mall is going in a group. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go to the uh, to the mall and play pinball, go in a group. Okay. Alright, so every kid should have a couple of quarters. They should also uh, have a focal point at the mall and make sure their bike's in good work. Absolutely. Now, Michael, on the other side, uh, over in our living room, let's just go on over there. Sure. Come on. Uh, you've got a couple of uh, young helpers here, and they're going to demonstrate for us just exactly uh, sure. how to keep a kid safe. All righty. You ready? Okay. Who are these guys, first of oh, all? Oh, these are my students, and um, they've been working with me for quite a while. Different. Uh, this is Richard here. This is Iman. This is Christine. Uh, this is Nicole. And this is Renice. Okay, and they've been Thanks students. Thanks for coming, guys. Okay, you ready? Okay, fighting stands. Ready? Aye! Aye! Okay, we're just going to show a few little uh, basic techniques. Reverse punch. Ready? Aye! Aye! Nice and loud. Aye! 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 Claw hand strike. Ready? Aye! 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 Full front kick. Ready? Aye! Aye! Nice and hard. Aye! 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 Good, good. Now back fist reverse punch. Last one. Ready? One. Uh, nice and loud. Two. Uh, three. Uh, four. Uh, five. Uh, good. Attention stance. Uh, uh, now ready. Right. 
Okay, now we're going to just demonstrate a few scenarios where grabbing them, possibly using uh -huh. their claw hand strike, using their hairbrush, and so on. Okay, back up a couple steps. Michael, how old should kids be uh, when they get started in karate and stuff? I think for the most part, uh, five years old to six years old is mm -hmm. a good age to start. Now they can mentally mm -hmm. really absorb things. It's good for their self-esteem, mm -hmm. good for self-discipline. It gives them confidence, makes yeah, them more aware. Michael, I'm looking at their faces. They do not look scared at all. Actually, they look intimidating <laughs> to me. I'd be afraid of you yeah. guys. You have to try train children, I mean, properly, mentally and mm -hmm. physically. The problem with uh, martial arts and people at home that think karate, think jiu-jitsu, think judo, is they think right away that it's kick and punch and, 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 and movies and action and, right. you know, kill, you know. Kung it's not true. Mm -hmm. I think that for the most part, when I teach a child, and I think that most instructors, when I do teach children, should understand that the mental side of that instruction sh is more important than the physical side, mm -hmm. because without the mental side, you can't be physical. Mm -hmm. if, you don't understand, if you don't understand your body, uh, uh, you, then you're not going to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. So your mind is what creates okay. the activity through the for, for the body. Okay. So we're gonna go through a couple scenarios. Uh, Renice, you first, okay? Okay. I'm just gonna do a little scenario with her, assuming that I'm on the street and I'm talking to her. Hey, little girl, come here, come on, come over. Yeah! Oh, ah, ah, oh, ah. And then she, and ran, then she away. ran away. And then she ran away. Okay. Now, Michael, do you also teach the kids that they should holler? Like yes. scream fire always. or anything uh, like that? I always tell them, teach them to key eye and holler. Uh, and that's the biggest problem you have is a lot of times when you're in a situation where someone does grab you, you have trouble with that. They're afraid. They will become a little intimidated with that, and they, they react. They can mm -hmm. react if you teach them to. Con if you condition them to react, mm -hmm. for every action is a reaction. If I grab you and I teach you to react off of that, it's just like driving your car, and making sure. a left-hand turn with a blinker. You know you have to put the blinker on to make a left-hand turn. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking about the blinker and knowing you have to make a left-hand mm -hmm. turn. Same thing here. So you need to condition. Key eyes the same thing. Although it's a little hard because kids, when they get in, in a fearful position, they normally don't know how to talk. It's kind of like kind of saying. He's trying to get sure. it out, but you can't. So okay. th also, I read in your literature to say, you're not my mother, you're not yes, my father. Absolutely. So when I approach a child and I tell them, I teach them uh, uh, that a, a stranger comes mm -hmm. in front of them and tries to grab them and does grab them, finally gets a hold of them in a mall situation, in a park, anywhere, it's important that they yell, this is not my mother, this is not my father. Because in most cases, if you're a parent, you know as well as I do that when you grab a child, if you're mad at your child, mm -hmm. you might grab him in the mall and, you, and she might be screaming or kicking because she's just grouched you because right. whatever. People just ignore that because they say, well, it's got to be your parent. She's sure. disciplining right. the So child, if you right. say, this is not my mother, this is not my father, mm -hmm. someone will take notice and yeah. immediately stop in that situation. So it's important. People just don't scream or teach a child just to yell or okay. whatever. Fire. Fire is no good. It doesn't work. This is not my mother, this is not my father. Please help me, somebody. At the same time, he might be busy trying to shut your mouth up and you can use you know, your hands to strike the eyes. Okay. Okay. A couple more situations. Okay. I'm going to grab you from behind. Ready? Turn. In this situation, you're going to pick up. Good. Wow. That's okay. impressive. Okay. Key eyes guy. Okay. Go, quick. We'll get, grab her. Okay, this is a situation where you might have somebody walking out of a ladies' room in a park or mm -hmm. uh, in a mall, maybe walking with a big sister, and somebody comes up and tries to sell them something. All right. Hey, little girl, hey, you want this? This is nice. Hey, hey, oh, 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 yeah. Oh, and she blew wow. a whistle. Again, to get attention. Keep eye. Okay, good. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, Hyman. Now, I'm in this situation, now put your hands down, situation where he's little, I might want to just grab him and run off with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I pick him up. Good. Very nice. Terrific. Great job, you guys. All right. Call one more. Yeah. One more we got. Make it really quick. We're, We're almost quick. out of time. Quick. Almost yeah, out of time. Ready? Cool. And she's combing your hair. She's combing your hair. I come over. Hey, hey. Good. So just so use the whatever they have in their hands as a, as a weapon as yes. well. All right, very, very, very good. Michael yes. Dibasquale, thank you very much for joining us today. Oh, Thanks, pleasure. kids. You pleasure. did a great job. Excellent job. Right, bow, bow down, everybody. Right. Okay. Very, nice. very good. Very nice. All right, uh, don't touch that dial. Denise and I will have some final thoughts for the day when we continue. Oh. 
This is like home for us. The Chris Monies Owner's Mario's Cafe. Every little detail makes this the best. The best coffee beans, the best pastries, even the best way to get out coffee stains. If we do things